Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem restore IP addresses. So we are given a string S containing only digits. Digits means anything from zero to nine. From this string S, we want to return all possible valid IP addresses that can be obtained from this string and the IP addresses themselves can be returned in any order. And they do explain to us what the format of an IP address or a valid IP address actually is. It's basically four integers where each of the integers is a value between zero and 255. So basically each of the four integers has to be between zero and 255. And each of the four integers has to be separated by a single dot character. So for example, this 192, 168, uh, just one, and then 312. So these are four integers. Let's say they're separated by a dot. This is valid, this is valid, this is valid, but this 312 is too big, right? It's bigger than 255, so this is not a valid IP address. But if we uh, change the 312 to maybe 132, uh, then this becomes a valid IP address. Uh, remember, we can actually have a zero integer as well. So we can put a zero here because zero is allowed. But would this be allowed? Would two zeros be allowed? Or what about a zero and then a one? Is that allowed? No. Basically, in any of these four integers, we cannot have any leading zeros except for the value zero itself. So we can have zero itself, but we can't have any leading zeros if we have any other uh, values. So now let's take a look at an example and actually understand what we're supposed to do here. So we're given this string S, it's only gonna have digits just like it does. And it's not that we're gonna take random digits from here and then assemble our own IP address or something. You know, this is already an IP address or at least the numbers aren't gonna change. We're gonna use all of these integers and the order of these integers is going to stay the same. It's a little bit confusing how they present the problem. So I just wanted to clarify that. The only thing we're going to be doing here is actually deciding where we put those four uh, dots, right? Where do we insert those dots such that once we have put the dots there, that this turns into a valid IP address like this one and like this one and then once we have created all possible valid IP addresses from here then we just want to return them in a list like this one and by the way the only difference uh, between these two examples is where we put the fourth dot so you can see that in the first one we put the fourth dot here after two of the ones and before the third one but in the second example we put the fourth dot after all three ones so now how do we actually solve this problem since we have to create all possible valid ip addresses the first thought is definitely to brute force this problem when you brute force a problem like this one where you're actually you know creating choices uh, creating combinations things like that backtracking is usually the first way to you know brute force this problem backtracking right and then sometimes using backtracking uh, we can kind of simplify it to a dynamic programming solution right but just so you know it's pretty obvious to me and maybe to other uh, leak code veterans that this will not really be optimized with dynamic programming the biggest hint uh, for me is that we actually have to create the output it's not that we have to count the number of ways it's that we actually have to create each of those IP addresses and this kind of uh, you know operation actually creating that list can't really be simplified uh, you know you can sometimes use dynamic programming but it doesn't actually optimize the solution very much which is why we know that brute force backtracking is pretty much the best solution we can do here okay so we know we want to use backtracking we want to brute force it we want to go through every possible IP that we can create from this and then figure out if it's valid then add it to the result if it's not valid then don't add it to the result how do we actually do that well if you watch my videos I'm sure you know that I like to do decision trees it's the easiest way to understand a recursive problem or even a brute force problem like this one but the question is what exactly is our choice because that's what a decision tree is about it's about making decisions what decision can we make 
Well, remember, all we're doing is placing the four dots in this string. So the, the first question is, where do we put the first dot? So we're going to traverse through this string S. We're going to use a pointer uh, called I to basically traverse through this a string. So initially, we're at the first character. So we have a choice. We can put the first dot over here. We can put it right after the two, right? So if we do that, then our first integer is going to be two, right? But we could make a different decision, right? Two is a valid number, which is why we put the dot after the two. We could put the dot, though, after the second character. We could put the first dot after the second character. What would that do? Well, that would make our first integer 25. I'm sure you see where I'm going with this. We could also put the dot after the third character. Then we'd have 255. All three of these are valid integers. Now, what would have happened if instead of 255, this was 256? What would I do here? Would I continue down this path? Remember, the max integer size we can have is 255. 256 is too big. We're doing backtracking. We're doing brute force. But obviously, this path is not going to lead us to any solutions. So we would terminate this path. We would not continue down this path. But we would continue down these two paths. But this was 255, so we're in the clear. Now, we could even put the first dot over here, right? And then what integer would we get? We'd get 255. Five, two, 2,000, right? That's obviously too big. So what are we learning here? We're learning that there's no point in putting the dot. There's no point in having more than three decisions, right? We could either have one digit you know, from wherever we start, right? In this case, we start at the beginning of the string. We could have one digit from there, two digits, or three digits. We can't just skip a digit, right? Because that's just not allowed in this problem. We have to put the dot somewhere and we're not going to have more than three digits because, you know, that would obviously be too big of a number. Now, just to illustrate this, I'll continue a little bit more with the decision tree. What if we chose the uh, the first integer is going to be two? OK, then we're uh, then we're over here, right? Then we're at the second character. We're at five. So we could either choose to put the dot here or over here or over here, right? What integers would we get in that case? We would potentially get a five or we'd get a 55 or we'd get a 552. Obviously this is too big, right? We're not gonna continue. So this is kind of how it would work. Just to show you a valid scenario, imagine if we you know, had 255 as the first integer, uh, 255 as the second, and then maybe 111 as the third, and then as the fourth, we have 35. Right. In this case, we got to 35. So in this case, we found a valid solution, right? We reach the end of the string and we put the first dot here, right? Because we got a 255. We put the second dot here. We got 255. We put the third here, 111. And then we put the fourth one here. And I said that we have four dots that we're going to place. But actually, the last one, the fourth one that we place, is always going to be at the end of the string. So we're just going to chop that off, right? This is a base case. We found that all four of these integers are valid. And then we can take this and then add it to our result. And you can see that it's one of the strings that was in the output of the first example. So that's kind of how things would work. Now, what if we ended up putting the fourth dot over here? right? In that case, uh, we have four dots and we still haven't reached the end of the string, right? That's not good. It's definitely not valid because we have to use all the characters in the input string. So in this case, this would be another base case where we return and we do not add the string to the output. So that's actually the entire logic of this problem. But what if your interviewer asks you, what's the worst case time complexity of this solution? Well, like I mentioned, each time we branch, we could have up to three decisions, right? At most three decisions, because we're not going to have four digits in one of the integers, right? So we could have up to three decisions. What would the height of this decision tree be? Uh, worst case, it would be the length of the entire string. So let's say something like three to the power of n. This would be the worst case time complexity, but think about it. How big could this string actually be? In the problem statement, I think they say it can be up to like a thousand characters, but does that even make sense? Because any possible string that we get, if the length of it is greater than 12, it's impossible to create a valid IP address if the length is greater than 12 because that, that means one of the integers has to have at least four digits in it. And we know that that's not possible in a valid IP address. So 
One thing we could check is if the length of the input string is greater than 12, we immediately return an empty list. This would be something to discuss with your interviewer, obviously, because it's important to the problem, right? The entire problem is about IP addresses. So we said that this was the worst case time complexity, but in reality, isn't the worst case time complexity three to the power of 12, which is just an integer? This kind of thinking isn't really required for leak code, but I do think it's pretty important for interviewers depending on what they are looking for. But that's enough for now, so let's jump into the code. Okay, so now let's write the code. You can ignore these comments up above. It's just something that helped me when I was solving this problem for the first time earlier today. Uh, but so uh, we know that we have a result. It's gonna be an empty list initially. We know that if the length of the string is greater than 12, we can immediately return this empty result list because then it's gonna be impossible to create any valid IP addresses. But otherwise, we're gonna do the recursive part, the backtracking part, and uh, as you know, I like to define functions, and I like to do nested functions because then we don't have to pass in a couple parameters like result and like uh, the string s into this function each time. They'll be global as far as this function is concerned. Uh, but the parameters we will have to pass in is i, the index that we're at in the string so far, we know that we can only have up to four dots, so we have to be able to track how many dots we've inserted so far. And lastly, we have to build the IP address, so let's just call it current IP. As we're building that IP address, that string, we want to be able to maintain, you know, have keep track of what exactly it is so far. So those are the only parameters we need. Now the base case, uh, we know that one base case is obviously if we have four dots, right, exactly four dots, and we have reached the end of the string s because we could have four dots, but maybe we haven't reached the end of the string s yet. That would be a bad case, but this is the good base case where we have reached the end. So basically, if i is equal to the length of the string s, that means we have used exactly every character and we have inserted four dots. So what can we do? Well, to the result, we're going to append the current IP address. Current IP is going to be the string with all the dots and stuff that we're building. Now remember, this current IP is going to have a fourth dot at the end of it, so we want to remove that last dot. So in Python, you can do it like this. Negative one is the last index, and we don't want to include it. We want to include everything up until this index. So we append that, and then we want to return. There's no need to continue if we've reached the base case, uh, and then we're good to go. Now the other base case is maybe uh, the number of dots has exceeded four, in which case we want to return immediately because that will not be a valid IP address. And another is if uh, the number of dots is not four, but we've actually reached the end of the string, but that base case is actually not required, so I won't put it, and you'll see why, because uh, the for loop that we're about to write won't execute if we've reached the end of the string, and then the function will return anyways, which is why we don't have to specify that base case. But you could if you wanted to. So now is the actual uh, bulk of this problem. And the way I'm gonna do it is have a iterator or a pointer. In this case, I'm actually gonna call it J because we're already using I as the parameter of the function. So I for J, uh, and we're gonna start at the character I, right? That's where we're at in the string S. And remember, we wanna go uh, up to three characters. So can we just do I plus three? Well, it's a good idea, but what if I plus three is out of bounds, right? What if we only have two characters to go from I, right? Or maybe even just one character. So a way to get around that is just take the minimum of I plus three as well as the minimum of what the length of the string is. Our pointer J is gonna iterate uh, up until the minimum of these two values we have. So either the end of the string or I plus three, whatever comes first. So remember our, our I pointer tells us where we begin and our J pointer tells us where we end in the string S. So this is what the digit or this is what the integer is gonna be. Now in Python, the second index is non-inclusive. So we have to do J plus one if we actually wanna go from I all the way up until and including uh, the J index. So this is the string representing the number. Of course, we can convert it into an integer, right? And the reason we're converting it into an integer is uh, we already know it's gonna be either one digit or two digits or three digits, but we wanna make sure that this value is actually less than 255 
Only if it's less than 255 is when we can continue and then call our backtrack function. And what parameters are we gonna pass in our backtrack? Well, the first is uh, the index that we're gonna start at in the string. If we go up until j, then what we're gonna pass in j plus one as the starting point for the recursive call. The number of dots is just gonna be dots plus one because we're gonna add one dot each time we make a decision. And the last is gonna be the current IP. So we're just gonna take whatever the current IP is so far, add to it, the integer that we're choosing here and what we of course you know this is a string so we want the string we're not going to take the integer version of it but we can copy and paste the substring representing that integer and then add it to the current ip and then after it we'll add one more character the dot character which is important for this so my question to you is is this good enough we made sure that the integer is less than 255 before we continue and then run our backtrack function uh, but remember, the second thing was we can't have any leading zeros. We're not going to have any negative numbers here, which is good, but we could have leading zeros, uh, and we want to prevent that. The way I'm going to handle this is basically by saying, okay, it has to be less than 255, and this second condition has to be true, which is the length of this digit has to be exactly equal to one because in other words if i is equal to j then obviously it can't have any leading zeros it'll either be the integer zero itself or it'll be one two three five etc right uh so either that has to be true or if it's not of length one maybe it's length two or length three in that case then the first character in the substring cannot be zero so basically s of i cannot equal zero one of these has to be true to make sure that we don't have any leading zeros. You could implement these conditions in a hundred different ways, though you can do whatever's easy or comfortable for you. That actually is the entire function. The last thing we have to do is just make sure we call the function uh, passing in the correct parameters. So for the starting position, we're gonna pass in zero. For the number of dots so far, we're gonna pass in zero. And for the current IP, we're just gonna pass in an empty string. And then after that's done, we can go ahead and return the result, uh, which we defined all the way out here. And lastly, let's run it to make sure that it works. And it does not work because I was dumb and I said less than 255 when we actually want less than 256. So now let's run it and make sure that it works. Okay, and as you can see on the left, yes, it works. And yes, it's pretty efficient. But I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.